change you want to see in the world, said Mahatma Gandhi. Change is inevitable and we must accept it with an open mind and a willing heart. Advancement is possible through innovation and we need this for progress. Hello everyone, I'm Seema and I bring to you another brand new episode on Green Principles. Today, someone is very special, a very innovative educator who is joining me in conversation. She is Mrs. Toril Shah, Principal, Dominic's High School, Hyderabad and what more. She is also founder of Drishya, an organization which celebrates the uniqueness, which celebrates your individuality. So let us hear it more from ma'am. Please welcome to Great Principles, ma'am. We are very, very extremely excited to have you on our show with us today. Uh, thank you, Seema, ma'am. And thank you, Great Principles. You all are doing a wonderful job in getting all the principles together to know uh, about what the schools of India look like, uh, especially after COVID. So great going, Seema, ma'am. Thank you for thank having you. me. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. So, ma'am, before we begin, you know, I'm sure my viewers are very excited to know about what all is Drishya about. So, if you could just give a brief insight how it could benefit them. So, please. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, Drishya is a program which is uh, curated by me and my husband. And this so happened when, you know, you love reading stories to your children. So, um, it happened one day when I was reading out Mahabharata to my uh, son who was just about seven years old then and uh, he had a lot of questions more than listening to the story he had lots of questions and uh, some of the answers you know for which I didn't know it myself so uh, going forward with that uh, I thought that you know you need not have answers for all the questions that are being thrown at you but uh, asking good questions itself is a big skill right so I wanted to extend this uh, to, I was already in the education, so I have a, a finance background, but I was already in education by then. So I thought of doing this as an experiment with uh, some of the parents, some of my friends uh, who's, who were of the similar age of my son. And that's how it got started as a pilot project. And now I have over 100 children. Uh, where uh, we do a lot of, where we work with stories. And here they come with a completely blank slate and an open mind. They don't, they have to leave all their preconceived notions behind. They have to leave their prejudices behind, uh, all the biases that they have. And they come completely blank. Uh, obviously, they have their past, they have their likes, dislikes, preferences. Uh, but it's just that they are told that, look, you are in a safe environment where you are not being judged. You are not, uh, uh, you, are, you, are, you will not be labeled as anybody here. We are all equal. We are all unique. And we are all here to express what we feel, think, ideate and have our own opinions. So in this way, we got started. And I took Mahabharat because Mahabharat, as we all know, is quite... Uh, is a gamut of uh, all kind of traits, emotions, uh, all kind of personalities, uh, characters, and all the values, you know, all the attributes, everything is there in it. It's a timeless epic. And children love wars. So starting from there, um, it kicked off in a very good way, a uh, lot of good response. And after which I, I thought it was a lot of learning experience for me in a way to, to know so much about the thought processes of the children. How children think, you know, why do you think that way? Forget children, how a human being thinks, you know, and especially at that tender age. So this was started at the age group of nine years, around nine, 10, 11 was the age group. And... Um, um, thereafter, it rolled on and I, I did a lot of other modules like uh, the stories of Gautam Buddha, uh, Dhammapada and also uh, Chanakya. Um, you know, our Indian history hides a lot of things and a lot of these leaders are not even known or celebrated. So I took Chanakya uh, simply because it's always Chandragupta Maurya that, that has been in the limelight. So who has been uh, the person behind him? It's none other than Chanakya. There is no book on him, though there was a, a serial on Doordarshan by Prakash Dvedi. And uh, I thought of taking it and studying it in detail and uh, presenting it to the children. 
where I get the views from them, the unique perspectives from them about all the things that he did. So there were diverse views that were presented in all these stories, whether it was Gautam Buddha, Chanakya, Mahabharat, also the human evolution by Yuval Harari, uh, where uh, all about, uh, you know, the sapiens, um, how sapiens came into being, what all has gone before that, how are we the way we are today? What is it that uh, makes us what we are today? How have we evolved? What is evolution? So all those things were discussed. And um, plus a uh, lot of folk tales from India and uh, Vedas and Upanishads is going on uh, at the moment, um, all about discovering yourself. So this program, in a nutshell, I would say, is a, a program for discovery, who you are, you know. Um, well, for the adults to understand, there's a lot of self-awareness programs, right? This is, uh, this is for children. So we can't get into self-awareness for them. But we can, sure, what we can surely do for them is, uh, what are your likes? What are your dislikes? Can we, again, detach uh, them from ourselves and think new today? So thinking every day as a new day. And um, we are here to respect what you feel and what you think and what opinions you have, as long as you validate it with uh, the reasons that you are giving. So it's a lot of critical thinking involved, a uh, lot of communication, collaboration, all of that, a lot of group activities. It's only interaction. I'm just a facilitator. I'd hardly teach. I just hear the children speak. Wonderful, truly an incredible, innovative, and you know, a very wonderful thing that has been started by you, ma'am. This is what is needed in today's world. We need to have children with clear opinions. You know, they need to have their own voices, and you're helping them to raise their own. So, this is a wonderful project, and I wish you all the luck. And I'm sure that this is going to go to greater heights. So, coming to your next designation, you're also the principal of Dominic School at Hyderabad. So, how has this journey been so far? Yeah, so um, again, uh, here in uh, Dominic's high school, um, this uh, I've been the principal for about two years. And before that, uh, I joined as a creative head. So it's been about four years since I'm in the school. And the progression has been uh, quite rapid, um, uh, mainly because I think I've, I've been quite acknowledged by parents, teachers, and uh, students themselves. It has been a very fulfilling learning journey for me. And uh, uh, there is lots to learn and to grow in this school because a uh, lot of autonomy is given. So one thing that I've understood is for anybody to grow, uh, what is required is autonomy and creativity and also self-expression. So when, when these things are given to anyone, anybody can flourish in a safe space. So applying the philosophy of Drishya that I already have and which I'm already practicing, I, I, I am uh, kind of uh, applying it the same to the school, right? Because it's all about uh, what is education? Education is nothing but discovery of your own self through your work or deed or creation. And that is what all the teachers and the students also need to realize the same. So um, with that being said, uh, teachers are given a lot of autonomy to make decisions on their own. Um, what I need to do is just uh, you know, ask them to make the lesson plans and probably uh, give a demo. And uh, then it's up to them to make it as creative as possible. And same with children. Children don't come as passive learners to the school. They have to have to read the lesson or whatever has uh, whatever is to be taught the next day. They need to read and come. And some of them are chosen to be volunteers. So how we make them as uh, active learners of the class? Number one is that they have those volunteers need to read and come. If they read and come, they need to prepare a bit with their questions. So with all this happening in this process, they try to own their learning. Rather than being a passive learner, they become an active learner that I am, uh, I am owning today's class. 
so they are called the class owners that today i am going to teach this i am going to explain this the teacher is at the back seat the teacher will just watch me and after i am done the teacher will probably correct me or my uh, classmates would correct me so this is how the learning takes place and this is how we have moved and transitioned from the old lecture mode of uh, learning and teaching to a uh, child centric active way of learning and that is what is happening in uh, domnix in a big way this entire academic year was only that there was a lot of resistance initially uh, nobody wanted to volunteer nobody wanted to take this up but uh, and teachers also you know there's so much of unlearning to happen in the school that oh how can i sit in the back seat how can a child teach but it's just that you know the reins of the uh, chariot has to be given to the child that's where he will start riding the chariot right if every time we want the children to be the uh, leaders and not the followers teachers are anyways the leaders so teachers job is like chanakya where she uh, makes everybody the king maker i mean the king and she's the king maker very well said ma'am you know in today's world we all need to focus on developing a child centric school and that is what rightly you have been practicing at your school because this is when actually the learning happens the things have changed we don't know no more we are the economy where the knowledge teachers are the knowledge keeper now we are in the information economy so a lot of information is already available and where and this practice of yours where you make the learner read first make him more inquisitive to answer to question more to understand more to gain more from the teacher how to evaluate the information he understand that so wonderful practice so now coming to my one thought which is there in my mind you were once upon a time a very very successful investment banker so how this major transition happened a decade ago that you changed to be in this vocation to so take us back why you opted to be in this field from finance to education i mean really no that's what you know i think miss seema that is what led me to where i am right now because um in our days in in the schools that uh, we were in i'm from mumbai by the way uh, so you know uh, this whole timetable thing you know where uh, you go to school and you are being led to everywhere now it's geography period now it's history period so you really don't have your own choice you're not making any decisions there right that that has been there for years and now at least it, i'm happy everybody is happy all educators are happy with nep 2020 also coming in lot of changes are coming in and it's all for the good right and all the there are so many consortiums and all these cohorts coming where all the educators policy makers are coming reimagining education rethinking education all these buzzwords are there everywhere and it's all for good so it's all very hopeful coming to the point of timetable i was talking about decision making children were not uh, even now in um, in most of the schools across the world uh, it's very timetable led where a child uh, unlike a montessori school uh, decides what he wants to do on his own you know so uh, i was one of them and uh, i was one of the many where uh decision making was not in my hand and when it when i came to the college level again decision making was not in my hand i didn't know what to decide for myself everybody was in commerce background and i jumped into commerce without even thinking what i am interested in without even asking myself you know what am i really interested in what am i inclined towards and that basically uh just pushed me into the finance field because i come from my family is a finance uh, background and i was pushed into that field not pushed but i pushed myself into it not realizing where i'm heading and after working for a decade there uh, and having my child in between i thought after visiting his school which was a montessori school i thought this is where my passion lies you know that that's where uh, that spark ignited you know in my heart and my mind that this is what i'm really interested in then i started questioning myself is it really my mind or is it my heart as well so i i did that as an experiment let me do some honorary work if i'm really self motivated that means that i'm really passionate about education so i did lot of honorary work 
and uh, this honorary work was in my son's montessori school itself and then i did 3 years uh, of reviving a, a school in uh, the slums of hyderabad and this was all for uh, the marginalized communities and um, i'm very proud to say one of the achievements uh, in my career uh, though it's not been recognized anywhere but i got these 17 students from the marginalized communities uh, to go up to the stage of uh, hyderabad public school um, with a crowd of about 500 people and perform there so um, and that performance was again completely by themselves i was just a guide i've always just been a guide and a coach and a mentor never been a teacher in fact it's always been the opposite i have always been the learner and my students are the teachers so um, these children were uh, guided by me to write a story and then enact it out and then perform it on stage which they've never done in their lives so it was they were completely empowered you know uh, to do something like that and um, um, i don't know where they would have got an opportunity like this so it was definitely me uh, who got them there and it was my passion to uh, make them feel uh, you know good and where uh, what uh, what is their credibility where do they belong what do they like i think i kind of unfolded that for them so that was uh, really a, a high of my life and it was uh, covered everywhere as well so that has been this journey um, in dominics as well as uh, my previous uh, of what led me uh, from a finance background leave the corporate job and come into education wonderful ma'am you know getting someone the confidence with that person needs to go ahead in life it's something very huge because one that that one push is needed for anyone to do something good with their life so you did the right thing and i mean not for one but for 17 students giving them the stage to perform i'm sure the kind of vibe they must be feeling full of energy the kind of confidence they must be having in themselves and how they must have felt when they have come down from the stage that today we did something which we never dreamt of so this is truly a very huge achievement and i really you know applaud for it and uh, this is something which is uh, really remarkable so this is the kind of passion you need in education when you have this you can change the world like toral ma'am so to my all my dear viewers do we all can also be the part of this change all we need to do is take a step forward rather than just complaining about it we all can do something so today we have learned this ma'am has inspired us to do whatever you can in your capacity and you can see the small changes making becoming big so it was really wonderful to hear your journey from your side now moving ahead to my next question so we have always like you also told me that you love to listen about the children their stories their thought process and you're a good listener but talking about our children they all are not very patient listener today so what do you think how can you develop the skill of listening and conscious living in our children yes um so uh, this is again um, by way of you know uh, first of all we are in this digital world where the attention span is extremely low it comes to about 8 seconds or something and that applies to everybody probably for children it is even lower so as far as drishya is concerned um, when um, uh, in a group of about 10 people 10 children including me so yeah Uh, nine plus one, ten. Um, everybody has to pay attention and write down what, make notes of what the classmate is saying. So while that is going on, you have to really pay attention, right? And you, because you have paid attention, uh, you will write down, and then you know that boils down to listening. so you have to listen really carefully to do this so that is one of the ways of um, inculcating a listening skill in you because listening as a skill uh, if i have to rate it amongst all the other skills that we know public speaking communication skills decision making and leadership etc i would rate listening as the top skill because first of all you we are taught to listen externally 
right that is one very important you have to listen to everything around you everybody around you and that also uh, teaches you a value of patience right so i am very clear that way when it comes to some of the rules uh, of uh, the class that i conduct and even in the school even in dominics that when somebody is speaking uh, you have to wait till she finishes and then you can pour in your thoughts raise your hand and pour in your thoughts you definitely have to pour in because it's all completely interactive it's not one way the second listening thing is looking within you listen to yourself so how do you do that by checking in yourself you know in the morning so we do this in the school even in the drishya class we do it uh, by asking um, how are you feeling today so you have to give in your check in word today am i angry am i uh, am i not so up to uh, attending school today is there a reason for it um i'm really excited to attend uh, the class today what could be the reason for it and all this check in thing comes in only and only if you are journaling so journaling is also an activity which we have introduced in the school this year but we have introduced only in the middle school so listening externally and listening internally so you have to listen to yourself to find out how are you feeling today are you emotional how emotionally active or inactive are you and that is very important because we are all talking about mental well being and social emotional learning it's all that right you have to keep checking on yourself it's only when you are in the right frame of mind will you be able to work well it's only when you are at leisure that you can learn well as jd krishnamurthy said so um, it's all about listening first so that is one and as far as conscientious uh, living is concerned uh, well um, that that will automatically come if the teacher who is teaching is uh, completely engaging the children you don't need to really discipline the children in a way they will automatically uh, get involved and engaged in your class if you are doing a great job how will you do a great job by involving them and engaging them and it's not a one way thing as i mentioned earlier all the classes that are being conducted in school have to be interactive how will you make it interactive only if it is mostly peer to peer learning children learn from children right and that has been proven so when children come prepared to the class and they start uh, explaining a certain concept the other children feel oh that's my friend let me listen to him i want to see how much uh, he knows i can learn from him really well something like that so that's how um even uh, the discipline engagement of the class comes in wow i certainly love this thought of bringing out the best in the child from both the ends from within and from the outside world so learn listening from outside and listening within yourself both is important and mam has very beautifully put up how the child can achieve both so this is the kind of environment which we need to have in our schools in our education system also so that a child is fully vocal to himself he is answering to his own questions which are internally he is always you know this is the emotional turmoil that is within the child always so he is able to express right. that better when he listens within himself so beautiful thought yeah. shared by ma'am here so to all my dear viewers do try to practice these this will certainly help you so talking about one of the achievements that you mentioned that though it was not recorded but that is the thing that you are proud of having those 17 children set you know present on the stage and giving them that spark so talk to us about your achievements other achievements also in your life which makes you feel proud i'm sure with the kind of person you are there must be so many smiles that you have brought to others so please share your achievements with us yes miss seema see uh, holding a, a trophy in your hand uh, is great it's uh, uh, you know a sense of achievement right but whenever i have received a simple card from a child also you know um whether you know it's it's just that you uh, whenever a child comes to you with a question you know that shows the child is really interested in what you have just discussed in the class right i consider that also an achievement 
you know these small wins lead us a big way so when children ask me questions i feel i have kept them engaged and that is also i feel i have sensed that because i also do journaling myself i mean you have to practice first and then teach right so i also do journaling where i feel that what was the best moment of today's uh, uh, part of teaching so when questions pour in from children when children come with greeting cards uh, not on teachers day or uh, a school day or founders day or anything but just generally they want to give you a card you know that's when i feel that okay this is this is really uh, something that she has meant it out of the blue she is giving a card maybe she really means it you know and uh, even on parent teachers day uh, when parents parents usually visit the principal only mostly when there are complaints right but there have been n number of situations and uh, uh, n number of situations where parents have come and approached me just to give feedback and those feedbacks have been wonderful you know so these are very small wins which go unnoticed but i see to it that i make a point of noting them down every time and uh, these are my small wins and my achievements is all i can say ms seema again very beautifully described wonderful thoughts you know you rightly mentioned that there are these small achievements is what makes you happy and feel fuller in your life so it is always said you know that success is not a key to happiness happiness is the key to success when you feel happy in what you are doing you are automatically a successful person so ma'am really is very passionate about educating children and that is what keeps her happy and there couldn't be a biggest achievement when you love your work and every day your work is adding up to value for others also because you know exactly. we all are living all are working but when we can give back to the society what could be better than that so this is the kind of work that she is doing and i am so proud that i am getting an opportunity to interact with her understand her thought process and today she has given me so many reasons to celebrate for my own self so thank you so much ma'am for bringing up this beautiful thought of you know writing your small achievements appraising them giving a pat at your own back and saying that yes you have created a difference so that's a wonderful thought so on this beautiful note i have reached to the very interesting segment of the show this is called the rapid fire round So here, ma'am, you have to answer me in one word or a sentence would do, right? So this will not be a very serious one. We'll be having some fun questions also going on here. So coming up okay. to my very first question, all right. So I'm very curious to know how do you spend your recreational time? Um, we go for a one-day hike and treks uh, in and around Hyderabad. One thing about you which many people do not know. um which many people do not know um uh, my cooking wonderful so do you cook occasionally or how is it yeah yeah um uh, about three four times a week three four times a week all right so who is that educationist whom you look upon for your inspiration jd krishna murthy I thought that was coming certainly because you are following his philosophy to core. Coming up to my next question, what helps you to stay connected with the world? Um, I think children, definitely, because uh, I uh, I want to interact with them. I want to. I look forward to working with them. I look forward to learning from them. so that is what helps me stay connected to the world right. any any children from anywhere all right wonderful so coming up to my next question one strategy of managing stress of day to day life for our dear viewers um meditation definitely because i am practicing it myself so uh Ten minutes meditation when you wake up, and ten minutes of meditation when you are winding up for the day, uh, with journaling, of course, and uh, also what we do as a family activity. Uh, it's not an activity, but a family uh, thing is the gratitude. 
uh, one word of gratitude and then we end the day that releases all the stress because you are acknowledging what went really good and who am i you grateful to and that's such a wonderful practice to do i think that is something i'll adopt in my routine too and i'll ensure that entire family does this so that's a beautiful practice i certainly know that this is going to take us a long way children need to children understands you know that what it means to to share that you someone has given something someone has added a change in your life so that's a wonderful practice moving ahead to my next question apart from what you are thinking what is the road map for future what are your plans for coming 5 years if you could just tell us where you want where you look at yourself post 5 years from now what would that be uh yes so i uh, envision something like having a school in a village or in the nature where uh, uh children are part of making the school brick to brick and um, we are all part we are all owners of the school including the parents not just the children uh the parents are also part of the school to pour in all their ideas and thoughts and it is a school uh, where uh, children are not just learning academics they are not just learning the life skills or whatever but it's just uh, being together having lots of fun and lots of learning lots of self awareness uh in the way of doing yoga and meditation and in a way of discovering uh who you are as a person so lots of stories would be there everybody is learning music for sure and um having fun growing your own food you know um so uh, just blending with the nature back uh leaving all these uh, gadgets behind though i am not against gadgets we have to adopt them uh if we don't we will fail because uh, we are in the digital age where everything is going extremely fast and if we don't go along uh, with this uh, age then we will definitely perish so obviously adopt wherever required but uh, what i mean to say is it's it's time to look within as everybody's attention span is going very short this is the time to look within this is the time to blend with the nature and um, and be self sufficient in order to be self sufficient you need to do everything from scratch uh, so hence um just get out of the cities and maybe uh, just do everything on your own you know from morning to night wow so a school that will take us to the journey to self that's wonderful thought and you know taking a lot of sustainability in mind growing your own food doing your own shows so wonderful thought process and i wish you luck and i'm sure this is going to happen and the day it happens it will certainly motivate so many others to take up this kind of schooling so beautiful thoughts ma'am it was great to know in you, uh, you in this segment uh, now we have reached to the last question of the show which is called the viewers choice question so as uh, you were talking about um, upgrading the system and uh, providing education for all so so is my next question based on the same thing so apart from uh, formal education and encompassing life skills at school levels there are, is a segment of society which is which cannot afford the even the basic education in the country so my my question to you is what measures should be applied by school leaders or educators to contribute towards education for all how can we achieve this um well i feel that uh, all the school leaders are anyways doing a great job by first of all uh, coming together and i think that's thanks to covid uh, because had this not been possible you know this zoom and video conferencing has all come up in a big way because we could not meet physically so uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, in, um, initiatives that are taken by policy makers to get everything digitized and uh, to ensure that uh, we have the remote learning happening in a village which is really far off you know where there is no network or whatever so um, i was hearing uh, miss rukmini banerji uh, the other day of pratham uh, books where she is uh, doing some amazing amazing work uh, to reach out to the children of the last mile 
and um, uh, doing the best all the volunteers doing the best they can um, so i'm i'm sure with uh, policy makers and with the leaders like rukmini banerjee and with all other people associated with her and with many such ngos uh, we will be sure to have children from all over the country uh, though india being completely diverse and um, majority of the population lies in the rural areas it will take time but our job as policy makers uh, uh, sorry as educators and school leaders would be to uh, probably share knowledge you know share the best practices that we have started in the school itself every saturday uh, teachers discuss their best practices what went well what went uh, really well received by the students in the class so similar things can be done uh, where uh, many such programs you know uh, many such organizations uh, like yours yours being the one then there is uh, ipn manthan then there is e lets all these companies they are getting uh, educators together to discuss so it's the cohort a very strong cohort that is required to reach all these uh, students interested children across the country to make this happen so uh, i am definitely looking for opportunities so it's good that you asked me the question and i'm open to share it here i am looking for every opportunity to do whatever i can in my space uh, for children from anywhere in this country so uh, having said that um, i would be really uh, happy and proud to do it so reach out to me whenever uh, anybody needs anything so again beautiful thoughts by a beautiful person having a beautiful soul over there so this is the kind of thought process that is required so as ma'am said she is willing to take up anyone and help anyone educate anyone so that that person's life can be improved and that person gets a better way of living so similarly we all can do this and i spoke earlier about it that when we all take a step together that is when the big change will happen so to as ma'am is committed so are we and we all and i'm sure by listening to our today's conversation there must be some kind of you know what you call manthan happening within you also that you know let's let me also do do something i can at least contribute a little so toril ma'am you know you are an educator and innovator who has brilliantly devised simplistic learning program of journey to self knowing yourself knowing your inner self i wish you and i hope and pray for you that you achieve immense success in life and have all the children benefited with your thought process thank you so much for sharing your thoughts and vision with us i thoroughly enjoyed the conversation and i'm sure my viewers are left with completely new thought process today thank you so much thank you ms seema for the opportunity it was lovely talking to you and also all the questions that you were asking thank you so much